Hi, AppSec engineers. Welcome to another episode of Security Engineer Interview Questions. This week, we'll be looking at a very interesting and very serious web application security vulnerability, server-side template injection. Let's get started. <laughs> We're going to be constantly putting out content on AppSec, cloud security, container security, DevSecOps, and Kubernetes security. Now, if you like this sort of content, you should consider liking and subscribing to this channel on YouTube. In addition, it would be great if you could follow us on Twitter and on LinkedIn. Now, server-side template injection is not unlike any other injection flaw. If you look at injection flaws, you can essentially break them down into this particular diagram. So whenever any user data is intermingled and is treated as executable code in some kind of an executable environment, you have an injection flaw. That's why when you have SQL injection, when a user data, which is a SQL query, is treated as a SQL query, that's when you have SQL injection. When user data is treated as an LDAP query, it's treated as LDAP injection. If user data intermingles and is treated as an OS command, you have OS command injection. Very similar to that, you also have template injection where user data intermingles with the templating system and is treated as executable code by the templating system, which means that by not separating user data and executable code, you have injection flaws. Now, template systems are very popular. You would have probably seen something like this. So you would have probably seen emails with these squiggly braces that essentially are template variables that need to be filled in, which have sometimes not been properly filled in. So templating systems are very, very popular. Popular. You see them all the time. You see them on standard web pages. You see them on email templates. You see them all over the internet and it's very popular. A lot of them are rendered from the server side. A lot of these templates are rendered from the server side. So which means that you typically tend to have injection when user data intermingles with the server side and is executed like some kind of a server side payload. So that's basically what you have with server side template injection. So templating system allow you to load dynamic data through variables and you know display that on the front end or an email or something like that. Anytime you unsafe embed user data in a templating system and, uh, and then execute that obviously because it's executed on the server side, that's when you have server side template injection. And of course, this happens whenever user data intermingles with your dynamically generated template. So that's really one of the things you need to watch out for in server-side template injection. Now, this is pretty huge because server-side template injection typically leads to remote code execution, which is the worst outcome when you're dealing with trying to secure your application because that means the adversary is going to be able to run code on your server environment, which is really, really bad, really, really dangerous as far as your application is concerned. So it could have, you know, a privilege escalation on the operating system, source code disclosure, anything that you would think of as your nightmare scenario for your application is possible with server-side template injection. The next demo that's going to follow, we're going to be looking at an example of a server-side template injection with our application. So we have a lab that we've set up in AppSec Engineer that talks about server-side template injection, both attack and defense. And we're going to be looking at the attack side of that particular lab in our following lab segment from AppSec Engineer. So stay tuned for that. The lab that you're going to be looking at for template injection or server-side template injection is from our application security essentials class on AppSec Engineer. So along with template injection, we have a ton of other labs around different subjects like cross-site scripting, other injection attacks, authorization, access control flaws, amongst several other areas, including attack and defense labs. In fact, what we're going to be showing you is just the attack lab, but we also have a pretty comprehensive defense lab around server-side template injection. So if you're interested, do check out appsecengineer.com and check out all the other courses aside from AppSec Essentials as well that we have that you can get value from. So the first thing we're going to do is open up a new terminal, like always, and we are going to deploy our application. Now, this is a pretty simple application. It's a Node.js application. So the idea here is that we're running a Node.js application and we have a templating system that we're using to render server-side variables on the client side called Pug. Now, Pug is a very popular Node.js templating system, which we're going to be using in an insecure way. We're going to attack it, and then we're going to try and see some defense possibilities 
against this. We are also going to be using a tool called TPL map to be able to attack this and show you how these kind of attacks can be easily automated as part of an attacker's toolkit. So this can be very easily automated, can be made very quickly possible from an attacker's perspective, even if the attacker is not a very skilled attacker. So let's go into that directory and uh, we're going to install some of the dependencies with npm install. Now, once this is done, we are going to run the server. So we're going to run the server with a simple node process, node index.js. So index.js happens to be the server process that we're running. This is running now on port 5000. Now let's copy the URL here and open up another tab and go to port 5000 slash question mark name is equal to app. Now, if you see this, you'll see that it just echoes whatever is in the name parameter. So whatever is in the name parameter, let's say we have server side template injection string, it is essentially going to echo that. So we suspect that this particular parameter that is being rendered from the server side. So remember the name parameter is going back to the server side and then it's being rendered as a variable on the client side. So if you look at this HTML page, it's just rendering this as a header one. So we're going to see if we can try and exploit server side template injection against this particular flaw. So let's see if we can do that. Let's go back to our command environment or the CLI environment and then open up another terminal. And in this case, what I'm going to do is open up this terminal just next to it. I'm just going to open up an adjacent terminal window. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to use a tool called TPL map to exploit this flaw. So the first thing I'm going to do is install a library required for TPL map, which is the requests library, and then we're going to get started. So we're going to go to root TPL map, and then we're going to first try and exploit this flaw. So the first thing I'm going to do TPL map, essentially, if you give it a URL, it will try and find out what kind of a templating system it is and whether it's vulnerable or not. Since we happen to know that it's a templating system called pug, we're going to pass in the parameter for pug. But even if you don't know the templating system, TPL map will try and figure it out for you. Now, please note that any of these tools that especially TPL map is a very disruptive and intrusive tool. You're not supposed to use it without permission. I'm just showing you this so that you understand how easy it is for attackers to leverage this against your own application. Attackers don't really have a code of conduct, so they can easily leverage this quite quickly. So I'm going to use TPL map and pass in the URL, which is going to be HTTP localhost. So I'm just going to pass it against localhost because it's running on localhost slash question mark name is equal to appsec engineer, just like we did before. We're just going to pass in a genuine payload and then we're going to try and exploit this. And then we're going to declare the templating system with the dash E flag as pug. So essentially what this is doing is hey, it's signaling to TPL map to exploit this URL and then using the templating system declaration with the dash E flag and calling it pug because that's the templating system. If I do this, TPL map would say, I'm trying to exploit it. Hey, I found something. So it says, hey, you know what? I've been able to find that you're using pug and this is possible. I can inject this. I can do injections against this and I should be able to do pretty much anything I want at this point in time. This is crazy, right? It's so easy to exploit a template injection flaw. So you actually look at the payloads being fired at our application. So the payloads are printed out here from our application and you'll see that it's fired a bunch of Node.js specific payloads to be able to exploit this particular flaw. So now let's actually exploit it. The first thing we're going to do now is we're going to exploit this flaw and we are going to get a reverse shell, which means that as an attacker, I am going to be able to persistently connect to that target environment. So imagine that this is an application sitting out on the internet somewhere. I am the attacker. Now using TPL map, I'm going to try and establish a persistent connection using a TCP shell to that application. So let's see how I can do that. So with TPL map, you can actually do all of those things. So I'm going to run TPL map just again, except that I'm going to add a another flag called dash OS dash shell, which means that, hey, you know what, TPL map exploit this flaw, then try and establish a reverse shell so that I can perform commands on that particular remote system, an administrator code. That's the point. So with template injection, you would have probably seen this in the video, you can get complete remote code execution privileges, depending on how the templating system is set up or which templating system it is. So I'm going to try and do the best thing, which is give me persistent access to that external environment. And when I do this, you'll see that now I am able to get complete access 
to that environment and you'll see that I'm able to get complete access to that remote environment. In this case, the remote environment is the same machine, but imagine that this was somewhere else, it would be the same thing. I can completely compromise the server side environment with a server side template injection. So template injections, as you can see, can be really bad. And especially with tools like TPL map, you can completely compromise the application. You can compromise the backend server environment and the hosting environment as well. So this is pretty serious flaw. If you like that video, you should consider liking and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. And if you want the best quality education for AppSec, cloud native security, Kubernetes, DevSecOps, threat modeling, and a constantly updated library of amazing courses with amazing hands-on labs, you should get a subscription for appsecengineer.com. Subscriptions are available for both individuals and teams of any size that you can access on appsecengineer.com. Please check us out.